Uh, we did the birding tour of east coast of Australia, national parks, Sydney to Cairns or Cairns or however they pronounce it, November, December, 2018. That's the year before the big fires. Yeah, yeah, we missed the fires, but there were fires there, undoubtedly lots of fires. And uh, we started in Sydney and of course, Sydney has is, is got the iconic um, opera house. Uh, and uh, on the map there on the Sydney slide, we, you can see um, Sydney and we just followed the coast all the way up to Cairns, which is almost just below the Cape of Cape York Peninsula. So it was uh, well over 2000 miles, a lot of driving. We, we rented a car and drove up and then we flew back from Cairns. Okay, so in the, the first thing we did when we got there was have a cup of coffee and uh, in, in the airport actually, and uh, in a, we had a flat white. It was very confusing ordering coffee in Australia, but the coffee was good. And then we plotted our route from Sydney. And, uh, but we stayed in Sydney a day and, and I went out birding while Connie rested and we saw some interesting birds. And the first one we saw was the uh, um, Australian magpie, which uh, is basically a, a pied uh, corvid, a crow. It's kind of the equivalent of a crow in our crow. And uh, so an Australian magpie, and this, there's three races, and this is the black back race, so it's got mainly black on it. And again, again, they're just like our crows, they're very intelligent. And uh, we also also picked up a tufted dove in, uh, in the parks there. And the noisy miner, which is a very cool, uh, it's a, um, <clears throat> a honey, honey uh, eater, it's a, uh, uh, very smart and very noisy. It's also called a soldier bird. So these are all the typical city birds. Yeah, these are the real common ones we picked up. And uh, we did get a, a pretty good honey eater though. It's a- uh, New Holland honey eater. Yeah, it's a New Holland honey eater. This was uh, very cool. And this is right by Bondi Beach. Yeah, Bondi Beach in Sydney, which is like the big beach, big popular beach. And these, uh, there's 65 species of honey eaters in in uh, in Australia, and they're they're my favorite family there. Okay, come on. Okay, so uh, at, after we uh, one day in Sydney, we basically went sort of uh, <clears throat> west into the Blue Mountains and up to Blackheath. up to Blackheath which is right on the edge of, of the Blue Mountains Park, National Park. And- uh, It was uh, springtime in, uh, it was November, but it was spring in the Blue Mountains and they had all these, um, their spring uh, wildflowers were out. So the one on the left there is the emblem flower of New South Wales. It's the Warata. And uh, yeah, I was just going there near the uh, information center in the park. And it's about the size of a softball. It's a big flower, pretty flashy. So uh, we we uh, set up camp. This is our campsite, and you can see Leo's looking up into the trees, into that uh, eucalyptus tree, and he's looking at our very first kookaburra. So that's our first campground. And there's the kookaburra. And uh, we'll give you a little bit of his voice here. And uh, we also, uh, there's actually a couple of calls. So I'm going to give you another dose of the kookaburra. And if you listen to any jungle movies, they always have that call. Um, and after, uh, from our campground, we went in, we did a number of day trips in the Blue Mountain National Park, which was fabulous. 
and at the gate they have the uh, a statue of the lyre bird, which is a symbol for national parks in New South Wales, and it's a wonderful, splendid, beautiful bird. Uh, and we got some wonderful views of the the escarpment and the valleys uh, in the Blue Mountains, and. Uh, this little notch here is called Pulpit Rock. It's a famous um, site in, in uh, the Blue Mountains. And this is? This is? Um, the water, the spring flowers that was blooming. It is a laurel leaf grevillea, and there's all kinds of different kinds of grevilleas, and they're sort of similar. It's curly flowers on them. More, most of them are more, more bushes than that, bush-like shrubs. Yeah. This one is. The flowers are a big deal in Australia. The birds love them. And uh, this is our first parrot. This is the a crimson rosella, which is a, a relatively common uh, large parrot. Uh, and uh, there's three races. There's this crimson one, there's a green one, and a yellow one. But uh, around the East Coast, it's mainly the crimson. And uh, here's, here's another uh, bird. This is a red wattle bird. And you can see the little red wattles on it. Uh, it's feeding on a piece of melon that some tourists threw at it. And uh, it is a honey eater as well. So it's one of those 65 honey eaters. And, uh, you can notice it's got a, a bright yellow belly. Unfortunately, you can't see it from, from this picture. So it's a red wattle bird, honey, honey eater family. And here's a couple of uh, other splendid wildflowers we found. So the yellow one is the broadleaf drumsticks and the uh, pink one is called match heads. And they were all in the same area as the original red, big red one that we saw there. And they're, these are big flowers. Yeah, they're kind of shrub sized. And small shrubs. And there was a little pond right across from our campground, and there was a, a Pacific uh, black duck in it, which is a uh, uh, typical uh, paddle, puddle duck for uh, Australia. And so uh, when we did a hike down into the valley, and uh, we came across this, and and if you guys can guess what it is, what is it? It's a spiny anteater, which is, uh, it's uh, a short beaked echidna is a species. And when we, we uh, walked down the path, it was in the path and as soon as it saw us, it curled up and put out all the spines out. So that's what you saw in the previous picture. And then we just kind of backed off and hid and it came to life and walked, walked up the path right past us. So it, it's an egg laying mammal, uh, well, a monotreme. So it lays eggs and the only other uh, mammal that lays eggs is the platypus. The platypus and the three species of echidna. So we were pretty excited to see this guy, very cool. And this is a, uh, uh, what is it called? Gray fantail. <laughs> a gray fantail. Yeah, this is a flycatcher, flycatcher family. It is a big group of fantails. Uh, and there's a lot of, there's uh, many flycatchers in Australia. They have no shortage of flies. And we walked down into the canyon. It was wonderful, beautiful, clear, crystalline water. And uh, with, with the eucalyptus were in bloom. And we, one, one evening we caught a little bit of uh, the sun just starting to set in the, in the canyon. So it was actually pretty cool there. Uh, we were, we, uh, our sleeping bags were pretty light, but it, it was definitely cool, cold up in the mountains. Yeah, it froze the first night. Well, that was the only time we needed our down jackets. So uh, after, after the Blue Mountains, we headed up the road and drove into Glen Davis and to Walemi National Park. Uh, and 
have. Wolemi is named after the Wolemi pine here, uh, which we actually didn't see. Like it's, it's, uh, it's actually uh, was rediscovered in 1994. So it, before that it was thought to be extinct. And there's like a hundred mature trees in the wild in Wolemi Park somewhere. And the location is a secret. You're not allowed to go there because they're so worried about um, preserving them. Yeah, so they, it was rediscovered or discovered in 1994. And it's an Oracariaceae, which I guess does, is neither here nor there. But anyway, uh, it, there's like uh, only about uh, 40 or 50 trees. They, they grow pretty big though, 40 meters. And uh, during the fire, during the fires, the following year after we were there, um, the the Blue Mountains burnt up, and they were really worried about these trees, but they managed to save them, so they're still there. So, uh, one of the iconic species of of Australia, obviously, is the cockatoo, and this is the sulfur crested cockatoo, uh, which is actually very common. Where when we were uh, looking, especially in Wallamy. And we saw a flock of maybe 40 or 50 of them. And I'm just going to give you a little uh, taste of what they sound like. I don't know if I can get it going here. So they are, uh, if you get a flock of 40 or 50, they can be pretty raucous but they're amazingly splendid. And this, this here is a very large dove. It's called a, a common bronze wing. And the bronze wings are, uh, they're a group of, of large doves with beautiful bronze on the wing, if you can actually get the light correct. But there's, uh, the, the doves in Australia are one of the largest groups. And I know, of course you can't, go to Australia without seeing kangaroos. This is an, an Eastern gray kangaroo. Um, the kangaroos, there's like four or five big species of kangaroos and they're kind of, there's kangaroos and then there's wallabies, which are kind of medium sized kangaroos. And then there's patamelons, which are little kangaroos. So this is, the big ones are all called kangaroos. And there was a big herd, a big herd of them in, right in our campsite. That's right near our tent. There. Yeah, there was about 50 of them kind of all the way around wake up in the night and you could hear them munching around you. So what is this big hole? We wondered what uh, dug the hole near our campsite. And we it turned out we were talking to some uh, people camping there and they said it were, they were wombat dens. And these are big holes, these aren't little holes. And uh, it, it was dug by the common wombat. And luckily we were really lucky because there are nocturnal species. We actually caught one at dawn just going into its den. So, and they're, uh, they're quite cool and they've got a reverse pouch. So their pouch points downwards or backwards. So when they're digging in the ground, they don't fill their pouch up with, with dirt. So that's kind of weird, or, but it makes sense. So, and, and uh, here we have, uh, this is wombat poop, common wombat poop, and it's cubic. So it's cubic shape and they stack them up in little piles to mark the territory. And there was actually a scientific paper on how they made cubic poop that you can access if you're so inclined. And that they poop about 80 to 100 per day to mark the territory. Well, also, I suppose, just the poop. So, uh, I, but one problem, of, of course, uh, uh, wombats at night, they're on the, uh, out at night a lot and they get struck by, uh, by cars quite a bit. So people are, are one of the big problems with uh, fatalities in wombats. Although luckily the common wombat is common, but uh, the other two species are really rare. Okay, and right below our campsite was a, a lyre bird, and the lyre bird is it's a symbol of the uh, of the New South Wales uh, conservation and wildlife group, 
And uh, this one is, is missing one of its tails, like the long lyre feathers. It's got uh, the diagram on the right shows what the feathers look like. And the reason they got the name lyre is because it looks like the antique uh, old fashioned lyre shape that they used to strum in Greece or wherever. This, this one, uh, live one that we took a picture of, it had, had, had uh, evidently been attacked by something because it was missing a feather and it was limping. So, but, and they're fabulous mimics. So they're called the superb lyre bird and they're mimics and they can make, they can mimic things like uh, power saws and um, car horns, all kinds of crazy things. And uh, this guy was quite a disturbing feature in the forest. It's a goanna. Um, and uh, or it's a monitor, a large lace monitor. And they grow up to, uh, up to six feet. And this one probably was six feet. And uh, they're predators and carrion eaters. So don't lie around in the jungle for too long. It could be. They just, uh, they just shuffle off when you walk by. Yeah, when you're moving, they don't go near you, but you wouldn't want to lie still for too long. And there's 25 species, but the biggest one, I think this is one of the bigger ones. So um, and these plazid pools that we found in Walami are, are perfect spots for platypus. And we were out to find platypus. So good platypus habitat. So you need to go there in the early morning or, or late in the evening just before dark and, and wait. And if you're lucky, you'll see one. Our neighbors told us, our neighbors in, in the campsite had, had been down there and they'd seen them. So they told us to go there and we went there. And the way you can see, uh, find a platypus is you look for bubbles coming up. And there were bubbles coming up all through there, but a platypus never surfaced, so we we're out of luck. I think they were pulling their leg. So uh, from uh, Willamie, we, we moved up the coast to uh, uh, Mile Lakes National Park. And uh, it actually, the little star on the map there shows uh, where, where it is in relation to Sydney. So we're up three or 400 miles north of Sydney now, I guess. Well, actually about 300, I think, something like that. So um, these were uh, actually 236 kilometers north of Sydney. I, I guess I'm wrong a little bit. And it's, it's one of the New South Wales largest coastal lake systems. So it's, it's interesting because you're on the ocean, but you're also on fresh water. So it's pretty interesting. And there's 40 kilometers of beaches and sand dunes. It's a very cool uh, natural environment. And a lot of rare species is one of the reasons for the protection. So uh, we park, we camped right by the lake and right by the jungle. So it was a really good spot. And I think uh, this is, uh, we heard the book book at, uh, at night calling, and uh, we'll tell you about the book book later. Um, there's just a pretty plant. I don't know what it is, but it, it uh, was nice. And uh, this is the banksia. It's a, uh, um, they're shrubs and they grow in dry sort of rocky areas and they're all along the Eastern coast of Australia. Honey eaters love them. Yes. And this this goofy little bird here, it, it's a it's a cormorant. It's a uh, pied cormorant, and it just looks kind of weird because it's looking right at us. So you're seeing the underneath part of its bill. Uh, there's there's a, a five or six different species of cormorants in uh, in Australia. And this shows uh, the two large ones on the left are the uh, uh, great, great, cormorant. great cormorant, which is uh, Phalacrocorax carbo, which actually is worldwide. And that we have them on the East Coast. 
So it's it's a very widespread bird, but the and there's another little pied cormorant uh, beside it, the one on the right, looking kind of disgruntled and wet, but uh, and a lot cuter than the big big cormorants. And uh, this is a uh, species of coot. It's uh, the Australian Eurasian. Eurasian Eurasian coot. It's a Eurasian coot. And it's not it's not uh, the same species as we have, but it certainly looks the same to me. And here is a very cool little bird. This is uh, a fairy wren. This is a female fairy wren. A superb fairy wren. As, yeah, a female superb fairy wren. And uh, it's tiny. And uh, there's uh, multiple species of, of fairy wrens in Australia, and they're all wonderful. We'll show you the male a little bit later. And uh, just some fungus uh, taking, taking a tree and, and uh, breaking it down. It was some really good fungi in, in the forest. And this guy, <clears throat> this is a crazy bird. This, this is uh, uh, It's a mask lapwing, also yeah. known as a spur-winged plover. And you can see the spurs on yeah. its wings. See these things here? These are spurs. And uh, it actually dive bombed me um, when, when we went to the visitor center. It, it was flying around and it and it uh, dive bombs dogs and people if they get too near its nest or its little guys. And unfortunately, I had a slide of, of, uh, of this bird with one of its babies, but I can't couldn't find it. And the, and the babies have a tiny little mask, just like the adults. It looks pretty funny. But anyway, it's a scary little bird when it's, it's actually re relatively big. And uh, just wanted to show you uh, what the typical Australian camps in, and virtually all of them use camp trailers. Uh, there's not a lot of what we would call a trailer, a camping trailer. And, but these, these uh, pop-up camp trailers are serious. Like they have built-in barbecues they pull out. It's crazy. Like they're the most deluxe tent trailers you've ever seen, but uh, it, and and it usually accompanied by a, a few dozen beer as well. And this is a um, crinum swamp lily. It's quite a large lily and uh, with exuberant blooms. It's really pretty. Um, in some cases, they can have a hundred blooms on them. So, and uh, very common in in mile lakes. Up to two meters tall. But that one wasn't. No, it was only like three feet. Yeah, and we went. We took a little stroll down to the ocean and the beauty, beautiful, pure sand beaches, uh, and uh, it was crazy hot though, very hot there. And and the jungle here is is luxurious, and the fan things on the right, those plants on the right, are uh, uh, called a cabbage palm. And, uh, but they, they're uh, very typical of this forest and one of the reasons that it was protected. And, and they can grow up to 40 feet or something. They're quite tall palms. And uh, a little butterfly, which we were never able to identify. And this, this uh, eucalypt here is another reason that they uh, protected the the Mile Lakes area. It's a rare farm, one of the rarer farms. And this is re quite close to where we were camping. And there was a, a, one of the campers said, oh, there's a brown snake down by the water in this clump of trees. And a brown snake, if you know anything about Australia, like it's one of the deadly snakes. And he asked me if I wanted to go down and see it. And I was faint hearted and I refused. So, Another cool thing about uh, Australia is they have these propane barbecues set up in the in the campgrounds for, and you can use them for free. And they're they're stainless steel, really good. So we use them quite a bit. And we 
tried some kangaroo sausage and this called kanga bangas and we cooked them up in this barbecue. Oh, we didn't like them. We didn't think they were very good. I don't know if it was because it was kangaroo or if it was just lousy sausages. Yeah, anyway, last time we're gonna have kanga bangas, but we use them other times for various cooking events. So, uh, and here is uh, a special bird. Well, I guess it's not that special, but it's one of the brightest birds you're gonna see in Australia. It's a rainbow lorikeet and it's feeding on the flowers there. And uh, we were so excited and it, it's a splendid bird, but uh, there's like 3 million of them in, in Australia and they're not, they're very, very common, but really nice. I think the bush is a grevillea, which is uh, the same kind of species or gen genus as the a small um, uh, red one we saw in uh, the Blue Mountains, but this is a shrub, a big size shrub. So the birds, the birds just munch down on the flowers and uh, they'll just go around and it, it, I guess that they pollinate them that way, but they feed on those flowers all day. So uh, view as some of the, the beaches in Maya Lakes. And uh, this is, uh, uh, unfortunately, it's not a very good uh, photograph, but this is a giant black, yellow tailed cockatoo. And it's, uh, this, uh, it's not a very good picture because I took it from a long way away. It was on the top of a tree, but uh, these, these are really cool birds just immense, as big as the sulfur crusted cockatoo. So uh, we went our way a little further north and uh, we went to Lime Burners Creek National Park. And actually on the sign there, the Lime Burners Creek, uh, you can see the symbol of the conservation group in New South Wales right there. And it's a lyre bird, it's kind of, Looks sort of like an octopus from here, but it's uh, it, it that's the symbol, the lyre bird. Yeah. So and then, and Lime Burners Creek is just north of Port Macquarie, which is uh, about halfway to the New South uh, to Queensland border along the north along the coast. And it's again, it's ocean beach and coastal woodland. Very nice area. And uh, the reason it's called Lime Burners Creek, the, the uh, people would go in there and they take oyster shells and burn them and make lime. And another wonderful, wonderful beach area. That's yeah. another Banksia, another Banksia shrub. Oh, and before. And this, this was just, it was kind of you walked up this hill, this trail up hill through this banksia forest, which are endangered, I guess, in uh, New South Wales, just because they're always coastal. And um, anywhere that's coastal is all being taken over by urban development. So anyway, all the shrubs there, those are the banksia bushes. Yeah, it was, well, like all parks, there's, there was a, a number of rare species that were being protected. And, uh, this, I don't know what this is, but it looks a little bit like twisted stock. It's very pretty. And- uh, That's the Banksia seed pod after the flowers there. And here, this is the male uh, splendid fairy wren. Uh, the East Coast uh, version or like there's, there's a number of variations in races. But anyway, it, the iridescent blue is amazing. And we love these little guys. They were very friendly. And here's a, this is a, a diving duck. So in, it's called a hard head or a white eyed duck. And it's very kind of similar. I think the head shape is almost exactly like a red head that we would have here. Uh, and somewhat like a scop, but it's definitely uh, very closely related to our diving ducks, or at least superficially anyway. And uh, 
Again, in the mangroves of, 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 in one of the estuaries, we found a white-faced heron feeding. You, you can see in that picture, all the little tubular things are the, the aerial roots for the uh, mangroves. And later on, we were climbing around some rocks and found these. These are straw flowers, which we grow from seed in Canada and have as ornamental. Well, they're native to Australia. And they're the ones that kind of, well, they're like straw and they, you, you can dry them and keep them all winter. So uh, again, moving to our next park. So uh, Quayambo National Park. And this was more inland into a much drier area. So on the map, uh, the map of Australia, we moved maybe a uh, hundred or 150 uh, miles into, into the interior closer to the Queensland border. And uh, it, it was a very dry area, I'll tell you. Ooh. So it, when we're driving along, we, we got these purple jacaranda uh, trees uh, along the highway, and uh, yeah, and then, driving to farmland on our way there. That part was not in drought, but so in, this, in the park, the park is very dry, and the 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 eucalypts in the park uh, were a, a species that they were trying to protect. And uh, our little campsite again, I don't know what I mentioned, but we brought all our camping gear from home in a in a in our hockey bag with wheels, so that works pretty good. And set it up and the, the campgrounds were pretty good. And uh, Connie making supper. So we, we also brought our little stove and we pretty functional. And, but on the previous campsite, we were in lime burners, we, I tripped over the, uh, the, the uh, fly and I ripped it. Uh, so Connie is sewing it back together and gluing it, and then we've used uh, Gorilla Tape on it, and it actually lasted. It was it just started to rain when I tripped over it. It was just getting dark, so we frantically I frantically got the, another tarp and threw it over the tent for the night, and we survived without getting too wet. And at the same time, just as as uh, it's getting dark and I'm running around trying to find a tarp, there's a a powerful owl landed in the tree right above our tent and started calling. It's just the worst possible time to have a, a wonderful species show up. So we didn't really get much of a look at the owl that night. So on our, on our drive into uh, uh, Quayambo, we we got one of our the species we were really wanted to see, and that was the emu. And uh, uh, again, it's sort of like a uh, an ostrich, but uh, native to Australia. And we saw quite a few of them around, uh, it, mostly around parks, but not always in parks. And you can see there's no grass anywhere because it's such a drought. And we saw some pretty scrawny looking cows. Yeah, not so looking very good there. It almost looked like everything had been burnt. There, like there's no, there was no grass. It was so dry. And, but it, it, was, it was barren because animals are eating everything. The, the kangaroos or cattle or whatever. And this is a uh, pied kurawang, which is a, a crow family, very common. Uh, a lot of the, uh, Corvids are, well, they follow that rule that they're black, but a lot of them in Australia are black and white. Uh, and uh, this, this, this one is pretty common around campgrounds and in the drier areas. And here we, we move into our second level of kangaroos. This is the wallaby, so um, smaller than a, a full grown or, or the kangaroo group, the middle group of kangaroos even though they're very similar to a kangaroo. It's just actually a random, sort of a random way to categorize them really. So, um, and that's just Connie standing by the, the wallaby to uh, 
show you what their size is like. And there was dozens of those little guys around there and they were, they were uh, very hungry. So they were bumming food off us. Yeah, they getting got into to the be, garbage. Got to be quite a nuisance. And there was a lot of ticks there and they're all covered with ticks and the ticks were crawling up our tent and crawling up us. So we were getting a little frantic near the end. <laughs> Yeah, and these ticks move fast. I wasn't too impressed. And here you can see these uh, wallabies. They're, they're eating the grass. They're just this like a a quarter of an inch or of of grass there, and they're just mowing it down, just working their way around, just eating whatever they can find. So it it was a really uh, environment on the edge. I thought. Um, but luckily, we we uh, found a white-eared honey uh, honey eater. Honey eater, and they're pretty common, but it's it, they're a little harder to uh, to photograph. And I just love honey eaters; they're just wonderful, and uh, they make the trip worthwhile. And uh, so, Wallami, there's a river running through it, and uh, this this is part of the gorge. It, it, right now, the water at this time of year, the water was low, so you can see that the water would have filled that gorge, and you can. There's a lot of um, erosion action in the gorge, but now it's it's dropped 30 or 40 feet. It's uh, was at a very low level. And goats, one of Australia's problems, evil goats, and they're an environmental disaster. And uh, there, there was quite a few of them in the park. And uh, the Australian officials are trying to get rid of them, of course. So they're non-native herbivores and they're competing with native species for food and water. So they're a big deal. But one, one solution the Australians have is ca called Judas goats, goats. And they, uh, they put a GPS tracker on the goat and let it go and it goes and finds a group of other goats because that's what they do. They herd up and then they track down that goat and then they, they shoot all the goats that are with it. So to control, try to stamp out the goats. We saw a lot of goats in the park and uh, you know, in our short time there, but the, they're trying to limit them. And if it, by the look of the landscape that obviously every, it's overgrazed this little guy, this is called a dollar bird. It's uh, related to bee eaters and, and kingfishers. And it's called a dollar bird because when it's flying uh, on the underside of each wing, there's a dollar shaped spot. So uh, they're relatively common after we figure out what they were. We it's can, a beautiful blue color, which yeah. doesn't show up too well in this photo. Yeah, it, it's a really bronzy bluish, but. Uh, Anyway, they're a very nice little bird. And uh, this is just a random boulder out there in the bush when we were, we hiked down into the gorge and uh, this was just there. This guy is another, this is a uh, uh, noisy friar bird, which is another honey eater the ugly side of it, and or it's also called a leather head. And you can see from the back of its head there, it's kind of kind of baldish and, uh, and dark. And they, so the Australians call them leather heads. Oh, come on. Uh, and that's hiking down into the gorge. And it was really hot that day. We just about didn't make it out. It was, it was nice to get to the water and check it out, but uh, coming back out was uh, exhausting. Uh, dragonfly down by the water. There's uh, some pretty cool insects there. And it was hot and even the uh, wallabies didn't like the heat. So this uh, wallabies hiding in the culvert to get in the shade. And there's another little wallaby sitting and cooling her feet. I'm looking for platypuses and I saw some movement under the water and up popped, not a platypus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, an Australasian grebe. 
and uh, they were qu quite the common grebe in these small ponds. Uh, but uh, no platypus. But and we did find a. Uh, uh, And uh, it, uh, there's a lot of kingfishers and, and kookaburras are kingfishers. And if you look at this, you can really tell it's not too far away from the, from, uh, the regular uh, kookaburra shape. And uh, another little platypus pond that skunked us. I know there's a platypus there somewhere. So uh, we moved north further into Harvey Bay and uh, uh, another, well, it, this wasn't really a park, but it had uh, a lot of smaller parks, municipal parks and what have you, and conservation areas around it. So um, we visited it. And here, this is um, a tree full of uh, fruit bats, uh, which I'm not really a fan of, but like there's thousands of them in, uh, in some of these parks. And, and the flying foxes, they're yeah. big. Yeah, they're big. Or are they a foot long or something? Yeah, they're about their wingspan of two or three feet, and they're they're pretty. Uh, they're like little foxes, so they're really nice looking little animals when you can get a look at them. But it was really hard to photograph them. You, uh, and at night, though, they're flying around by the hundreds. Uh, Beautiful little butterfly. Um, they're not, we are not identifying insects though this time. And this, this is another, uh, this is a butcher bird. This is a pied butcher bird and uh, uh, a very aggressive little uh, bird, but quite common in the eucalyptus groves. And this is a nest of a, a least friar bird. And uh, like, it's a pretty big bird and it makes a tiny little, well, not a tiny nest, but not that huge for the size of the bird. And it's hanging and lace tied in the tree, but safe from predators, but it's a, just marginal for the size of the bird. And this is uh, just some plants growing in one of the ponds where uh, we were looking for water birds. And again, we, we found our kingfisher and you can- in, Kookaburra. Uh, or, excuse me, kookaburra. And I was looking for, uh, there's another species called the blue wing kookaburra. And I thought this was it, but it doesn't have enough blue on it. So I was skunked. And there's a, some little elven thing hiding in the forest. We were right, we we're camped right next to the botanical garden. So this was a Japanese garden. A Japanese garden, yes. And uh, a little in, uh, bug, that uh, quite a metallic, colorful thing. There's a lot of colorful insects. And this is a Australian white ibis. White ibis, yes. And the uh, ibis are very common in uh, when in uh, areas near marshes. And in common in public parks, I think. What were they called? Dumpster birds or something? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yes. Uh, often they 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 become garbage collectors around certain places. There. They're kind of a pest in, in certain areas. And uh, this is a pretty flower. We don't know what it is, and it may not be native because it was in a botanical garden. Yeah, it's the problem, problem is there's a lot of plants growing in Australia that aren't native. And uh, we have we had a hard time trying to determine what M was, what is a native plant. So and but these are native uh, um, water lilies. And the little bird in the corner is, um, it, it looks like a barn swallow, but it isn't. It's called a welcome swallow. And it's, but it's very similar to a, a barn swallow. So uh, almost indistinguishable. And they, we have, they have mallards. This is what they call a Northern mallard. And I thought it was a different species because 
it actually kind of looks different. It's a little stockier, but it's uh, they're introduced from from North America. So uh, I think they've changed a little bit in their body form, but it's definitely supposed to be the same species. And there's another pretty plant from the botanical gardens. It's a wild, wild spiral ginger, and it's actually from Costa Rica. And so we slipped our, uh, away from um, Harvey Bay and we headed to Bundaberg. And Bundaberg is great. We were in Harvey Bay. You can see Harvey, Harvey Bay. Bay. We went up to Bundaberg. Yeah. We actually went to Fraser Island, but we're, we, don't, we don't think we got time to talk about Fraser Island. So we went to Bundaberg, which is great. Wonderful place. And this is our campground. We camped under that wonderful tree. And at night it was full of bats and they were dropping fruit on our tent and pooping on our tent. And it's the last time I'll camp under a tent under a or tree. under a tree. It was uh, quite the night and they, they were actually pretty noisy. It's like having about a thousand little maniacs in a tree above you. And they, they had a really nice uh, um, park with, uh, with the boardwalk and lots of uh, wildlife, lots of marsh birds. And we got a, a, a spot of the Beza hawk there, which is uh, um, one of the medium sized hawks, relatively common in, in Eastern Australia. And uh, the, uh, oh, what kind of gallon you know, is this? It's a, uh, <laughs> I forget what it was called. Oh, purple swamp hen. Oh, it's a purple swamp hen. Yes, yeah, it, it basically is a purple gallon you, but they call it a purple swamp swamp hen. And it's actually a, a little bit of a different species. But you can see that its feet are made to walk on lily pads and, and marsh uh, marsh vegetation. They're big. They're like a foot and a half, two feet tall. Yeah, they're pretty tall. They're very cool. And this is a um, Australian, um, oh no, it's a royal ibis. No, a royal spoonbill, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Getting my bird species mixed up here. Uh, moderate sized uh, waiter. And uh, this is a flame tree. I think it's from Africa though, not a native uh, Australian flame tree, which is a different species. But yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And of course, full of birds because they just love the flowers. Yeah, that's the thing. You got to, you find a flowering tree or, or bush and that's where the birds are. And a uh, dusky moorhen, uh, which is uh, native to Australia. Work, working its way through the vegetation. And uh, this is called a peaceful dove, another one of the species of doves. And uh, everywhere you, you look, there was another species. It's just a beautiful little dove. Yeah, the, the, the markings are so fine. And uh, this is called a, a this and is, a, well, it's an anhinga or a snake bird. Uh, and, they're found in, in North America as well, down in the southern parts of, the, of uh, the US and into the tropics in North America or in uh, the Western hemisphere as well. But they're, when they're swimming, they're, you just see their neck out of the water, so they look like a snake. And a great egret, another species that you could uh, find in, in North America and a cattle egret. This, uh, this cattle egrets are, are more of, a, of, of a, an Eastern species, but once they uh, managed to get across into North America, they spread through North America in the warmer areas as well. And of course, uh, they're called cattle egrets because they often hang around in herds of cattle and feed on the insects that animals are disturbing. So, uh, 
one evening we went down to the beach to check out the turtles and uh, we actually uh, there's a there was a place called Mon Repos, which is a, a conservation center. And they manage one of the largest concentrations of nesting turtles on the east, uh, in Eastern Australia. So we did a night tour uh, with them. It was very cool. Unfortunately, they wouldn't, you couldn't really take at a time. So we only got a couple of pictures. But this is a, a female, it's just finished laying eggs. And uh, then they allowed you to, after they finished laying eggs, then you could take pictures. So it was very cool. And uh, these are a loggerhead turtle. And you can see there's two pegs in sort of the lower part of the, of the slide. And that shows what marks where the nest is. So, uh, later on they when they come back and they can check it out so here's just another picture of that loggerhead turtle back so they were huge turtles very very cool that was one of the best things we did unfortunately it's hard to document and uh in our, our campsite in our campsite we uh it was kind of an old abandoned building and and in it was a little um brush-tailed possum, which is the second largest possum in uh, Australia, and very cute. And uh, there's just another picture of it. Um, they, they are apparently good eating, and uh, also they, uh, they, they are, have very nice fur that they use, that people harvested them for their fur. And their tail, the underside of their tail is, is on, doesn't have fur, so they can use it as, as a prehensile um, appendage. So anyway, this guy was just hanging out in, in this old building. And apparently they do really well in, in urban settings. So, um, and on and on we moved north and we headed um, to the Great Barrier Reef. Um, this is the south end of the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah, the far south end of the... Great Barrier Reef, at, and we went to Lady Musgrave Island, uh, and there's there's this big reef, a, a circular reef, and then there's a uh, a little island, only I don't know like thirty or forty hectares. It's not very big, and uh, it, but it was very cool. So we jumped on the catamaran and blasted off, and. Uh, that little island was full of birds. Here's a bridal turn, uh, and uh, they nest there. And uh, the, it, there was there's a forest on it, and the two or three species. The big uh, species is called Pisonia trees, and uh, the big colony, a large colony of white-capped knotty terns. And the knotty terns uh, nest in the pisonia trees. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's the trees. And uh, there's the nests. So each one of those little clumps up there is a nest of a, of a knotty tern. And there's the, the adult with the little one. And actually this whole uh, story about Lady Musgrave is on, a, I think a National Geographic episode. It's quite cool. Anyway, the Pisonias are a sticky trap for the naughties. So they have sticky uh, uh, flowers. flowers and leaves and they stick to some of the birds. They kill the birds or the birds die and the birds rot and provide fertilizer for the trees. So it's, it's really kind of a crazy thing that the, the, the trees provide shelter for the, for the birds, but they also take a, a tithe of, of death. And there's the sticky, sticky flowers. And there's a poor little naughty that's getting stuck up on the, uh, by the seeds. Once they get stuck, they're basically toast. Although apparently like 
there was a few people trying to clean them off, but uh, well, uh, the, the signs say don't bother because it's just kind of, it's almost impossible to clean them off. The signs say don't interfere, it's natural. Yes. And here's what, this is one that's succumbed and is now providing fertilizer for the trees. Because this is just a kind of a rocky hump without much uh, soil, this, this kind of uh, fertilizer is necessary to keep the trees going. And uh, also on the island, there was all these holes. What lives in these burrows? Uh, well, crabs. There's lots of crabs around, or rats. Well, those. It uh, turns out that it's uh, wedge-tailed shearwater burrows. So they're, they nest in the ground and uh, lay eggs in, in burrows. So they lay eggs and raise the chicks in the burrows. And uh, so the shearwaters are related to albatross um, and uh, a smaller albatross, but still an albatross. And uh, they're called mutton birds by the Australians because uh, there's lots of islands that the, the settlers would go to and, and dig them up and eat them. You know, like the, the chicks, when, when, because uh, the, the chicks get really fat and juicy before, just before they're ready to fledge and, and leave the burrow. So uh, anyway, but we, uh, we did see wedge-tailed shearwaters flying, but of course we didn't see any on the ground because uh, uh, they only come out at night. So, and here is a, a reef heron that we actually also saw on the, on the island. And uh, anyway, that, that was one of our best trips was on the island. Here's a couple of brown boobies looking the other way, but uh, I just love their big flippity feet. It's pretty cool. And we also, we also did some snorkeling and we, there was a, a glass bottom boat and we, we spotted a number of uh, turtles. This turtle in the, on the right picture is a, is a um, green, turtle. green turtle. It wasn't a loggerhead, but you could see both species there if, if, you, if you're lucky. And we saw turtles when we were snorkeling. Anyway, it's a wonderful trip if you get the chance. So uh, after, after going to uh, that part of the, the uh, reef, we moved north to Airly Beach and with, and which is right off of uh, the Sunday Islands, which are really popular for snorkeling and, and uh, um, all of the coral reef fun things. But uh, we actually didn't go out to Sunday Islands. We were, it was getting so hot that we, uh, we just kind of hung around the beach for a couple of days. And, and also left. we'd just been on two ocean trips, like the Lady Musgrave. And before that we'd been on Fraser things and we were getting, very tired of being seasick. We thought, oh, we just can't go out and get seasick again. <laughs> that was another reason we didn't go. But we, so we just were in the town for a day. Yeah, so we just, yeah. And with, it, it was nice and if we had more time, we would have done it, that's for sure. But, and, and we'd actually moved into cabins. We stopped uh, sleeping in our tents because it was too hot. We just couldn't handle it anymore. We had to go to air conditioning, so. It was cabins for the rest of the trip. And they had these cute little cabins that, in a lot of, uh, of the parks where you can rent. So it was great. And this little park was great. We got three lifers in two minutes. This is a, uh, um, <clears throat> oh, a plumed whistling duck. Yeah, plumed whistling duck. We saw two species of whistling duck. This, these guys were just walking around the campground. Yeah, uh, you know, and any, like you think it's a rare species, but there was lots of them just kicking around the campground, beautiful bird. And also this one, a Raja shell duck, just walking around the campground like a domestic duck and a uh, wonderful species. And this one is the best of all, if I can get this to there. This is a, a stone curlew, a bush stone curlew. And it's, it's the weirdest, scariest little weird bird I've ever seen. When, if you got too close, it would growl at you. 
honestly, and with those big eyes, it's kind of it's kind of a freaky little bird. It's like a rabbit chicken or something. It's about a foot high or something. Yeah. And uh, it's got long legs, which you can't see here, but you will on the next picture. Yeah, it was uh it was nesting right behind our cabin. Oh, come on. And there there it is with in, in its full height. Weirdest, strangest little bird you've ever seen, and very cool. And if I would sneak around the corner trying to get a picture of him, and he'd growl at me. It was very and and a little bit later, before we left, I think he had a chick. So they're very cool. Two thumbs up. And uh, we also did a little walking around, uh, checking. It was a little reserve nearby, and uh, we saw a few things, really good things. Uh, we saw some ant nests. And they tie all those leaves up and create a nest. Green ants. Green ants, called. yeah. And we also, this is a, a pied imperial pigeon, a really a large, large pigeon and really fast flyer. So, uh, and uh, uh, we were really stoked to see this guy. This is a fairly uncommon bird. And, uh, but we didn't stay much, very long at early because we, we were running out of time, we had to start moving. So we went up to Townsville and then went over to Magnetic Island to see if we could find a, a, um, a koala bear. So Magnetic Island is, is right there off the, off the coast of Townsville. So it, it was a half hour ferry ride over and uh, totally well worth it, another great place to go. And on the Magnetic Island Ferry, a uh, beautiful little place. It we, was like we'd found tropical paradise. It was just beautiful yeah. little island. So we we here we have on the wires just above our outside of our motel was a, a barns or a, not a barn swallow, a welcome swallow and another swallow, but not a real swallow. It's a wood swallow, a uh, white breasted wood swallow. Which is, uh, yeah, it's the stockier. It's bigger and stockier than a swallow. Yeah. So two lifers and well, one lifer. And, but then we, there was a little hike down the beach from where we were hanging out and was full of rock wallabies, which are like rabbit sized wallabies. And they hang out and they run around the rocks. So they, they don't have the normal feet or not like they, their feet are bare so they can have good grip on the rocks. Here's, a, here's one that's been fed a carrot. The people would walk down and give them carrots. And they're just little adorable guys. So, um, and I don't know why they call it, well, they call it a, a wallaby, but it's almost uh, too small to be a wallaby. They're really small. And here's one, if you look, um, you can see the foot of the baby sticking out of its uh, pouch. So, very, very cool. But they must be really tough because it was really hot in those rocks. And the next day we uh, put on our shorts and we started what we thought early, it was early and went looking for koalas. And it, it was really hot. And we noticed that as we're going up, just as we're leaving to go up, we noticed all the locals were coming back down because you were smart enough to go early in the morning that dawn. Yeah, well, they were there before the dawn. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was hot. Like, I sweated so much, I didn't have one dry stitch of anything on by the time we got back. Even my belt was wet. And uh, so we were walking through the forest. This is uh, Australian K-Poc, which K-Poc was what they used to use in life jackets. And this is a Australasian fig bird which uh, quite a common bird, really pretty, and uh, obviously likes figs. And uh, th this is a uh, Connie stealing a bloom off of a, a beautiful magnolia tree, I believe, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't think it's a magnolia, but I don't think it's a, a native. There's all kinds of beautiful tropical plants that people grow in their yards. I don't think they're all native though. 
some Asian species probably. And this is a hoop pine um, and we're climbing up the hill, the top of the hill. There was a big, uh, there was a, some sort of observation tower at the top of the hill from looking the war. Looking for koalas. Looking for koalas. And we got some pretty good views from the top. And we spotted, we got the uh, blue winged kookaburra. And he was polite enough to pose and show his back and his wings. So that was cool. And we finally found a koala sleeping in a tree. This is the only koala we saw on our whole trip. If you want to see guaranteed sea koalas, you've got to go to uh, to uh, reserves like uh, where they're rehabilitating them. But if you want to find one in the wild, you gotta you gotta do some hiking. And I don't know what it was like now that they had all those fires over there. But this guy was just kind of snoozing in the in the tree. So anyway, we got our koala, cute as a button. And Connie, the other- You can see how sweaty I am, I think. <laughs> gonna look cool to me. <laughs> and a couple, a brace of doves. So we got another peaceful dove on the left. And then on the right, it's a- uh, uh, Bar-shouldered dove. Bar-shouldered dove. So, and one of the birds we wanted to see was the bee eater. They're uh, a very lively little guy. And uh, again, we got him in town because he's on a wire. Right near our motel room. Yeah. And this guy, this is a orange footed scrub hen. Is that what it's called? Scrub, scrub fowl, yeah. Scrub fowl. It is the weirdest looking bird. Yeah. It's it like again is about two feet high. Two feet high walking around the town. With huge feet. It's like a. Woody Woodpecker on steroids or something. It's anyway, very cool. And they're relatively common. And uh, just a fire danger rating on Magnetic Island. It was very high the day we were there, but you can see it goes right up to catastrophic. So <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know whether that's a joke or not, but it's, uh, uh, that, that is a natural fire danger. Even the locals were saying it was unseasonably hot, it was very hot. So we, we, we were uh, blasted up from, from there, we went right up to Daintree National Park. So we went right past Cairns where we were gonna catch our plane out. So we went up to Daintree and then checked the, the park out and then we came back to Cairns and flew south back to Sydney. So Daintree was, uh, it's, it, Pretty wild area. They had a, huge trees. It was kind of uh, like the caribou in a way. It's a cattle and ranching. So, uh, and we stayed at Daintree Village, which is just a tiny little place uh, with a with a, a couple of lodges and a lot of ranches. And uh, there's a, a historic picture showing the logs. So. They, they did some pretty good logging in their day. And this is a view from our little uh, resort. The tree on the right there was a huge tree and it was just packed with birds. Yeah. To sit on the balcony and look at the, look at the trees. Yeah, and that, that's the Dane Tree River, which goes mm -hmm. down and flows into the ocean. So these are, these are metallic starlings from that tree right beside our, our uh, um, hotel. So, um, and there was probably uh, three or four hundred in that tree. It was crazy. And lots of big birds too. That we yeah, saw lots of big birds. And uh, here's the cattle for the cattle ranch. So, lots of cattle ranching right in this area. And uh, this is just a little tree frog we saw. And if you see, this is the this is the uh, washing machine there's the little knob there's that knob and there's the frog so it was just tiny so this is dawn uh, on over on the Daintree river there's the tree on the right again and 
in the morning, oh, I don't know, 500, 1,000 uh, flying foxes would come flying over past us. And at dusk, they all go flying back the other way. Yeah, so, thousands, hundreds of them, yes. Yeah, hundreds of them. And it, this is just right below our house. This is uh, our, our, our room. This is uh, magpie geese. Um, on the Daintree River? On the Daintree River. Here, I'm going to let Connie uh, take over for a second. I got to go get a drink of water. There's water right here, Leo. And um, there, uh, that's the, the same magpie, magpie goose close up. And uh, we signed up for a bird watching uh, um, uh, river trip. So uh, um, the guy picked us up and there was a couple from England that, that were signed up too. So off we went to look for birds on the Daintree River. It was kind of a rainy morning, but it cleared up. And so there's all these epiphytes growing on the trees and while we're going along looking for birds. And these are staghorn ferns. And this was kind of our big bird that we saw on this trip. Um, it is a tawny frogmouth and that's its new brand new baby there that had just been hatched. So um, it's a crazy, wild, beautiful bird. Yeah, we were really lucky to get that picture. We were, we were in a boat right below the branch, but the boat's moving and you're trying to focus in. And I took about 15 pictures and I got one that was reasonably good. It was kind of hard, but that was the best, one of our best trips ever was uh, that boat ride. Like the guy was a uh, really, really knew his birds. And he was a very cool guy. <laughs> We're stuck here. Just. Oh, there. So um, we also, uh, during that boat ride, we saw a white-bellied sea eagle. And the picture on the left is the one I took. Uh, and the one on the right I got off the internet just to show you what a, a sea eagle really looks like. But uh, th this is when, the, when you're in a moving boat and a bird's trying to fly away, it's, it's not a good recipe for getting a good picture. But we saw these in a number of places. They're a wonderful, majestic bird. And one of the things we wanted to see was a crocodile. This is the biggest crocodile I've ever seen in my life. It was huge. Yeah, it was about 15 feet long. And like, man, you just don't, you don't fool around with crocodiles. The, the, our guide was a, a kayaker, so we just mentioned we kayak too. And Leo asked him, hey, so do you ever kayak on the Daintree River? He said, ha ha, you would never go on the Daintree River in a kayak. You only go in a big boat. <laughs> They'll kill you. Yeah, even little, like, like even a 12 foot boat or something, you wouldn't want to be on that river. You would need a big boat. These guys are frightening. So, and this is a picture from the Daintree River of Mount Thornton, which is, I think the highest peak in the range up, uh, up this Daintree range. And it, it, 300 days of the year, you can't see, see the uh, mountain because of cloud and fog. Because like this, it's the rainforest. This is, serious rain belt here, serious, serious. And uh, we did zip down to the ocean uh, because uh, the Daintree enters the ocean pretty close to where we were, we were staying. And you can do it, oh, okay. And uh, of course, every, every recreational site the, on the beach has one of these signs that says, Marine stingers are present, and they got a bottle of vinegar you're supposed to pour on if you uh, if you get stung by the stingers. Like it's it's crazy. Like you don't want to go in the water at all between crocodiles and stingers and sharks. 
and and any place, most beaches have a, like a, a net around it for people who want to go go swimming. It's uh, this part of the northern uh, 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 Australia is just not a very friendly place in to be in the water. And uh, another uh, reef heron. So, saw one on Lady Musgrave. Yeah, we saw one in Lady Musgrave too, and and. This is the ferry from, we went over to, across the- Across the Daintree River to- um, Up toward- Cape Tribulation on the other side. And so anywhere, if you go to, across a bridge anywhere, they'll always have that wedding sign, crocodiles, don't swim. <laughs> crocodiles inhabit this area, attacks may cause injury. Don't camp near the water. Do not clean fish or leave fish waste near the water's edge. Camp well away from the water, et cetera. So, boy, they really, they really tell you, and uh, you just don't want to go swimming, that's for sure. And so this is a view of, uh, I think, the mouth of the Dane tree from uh, uh, the forest. And this, this was just the best forest, the wonderful area to be in. And uh, we were working on finding a cassowary. So that was our, so, but cassowaries are dangerous. They're, of course, everything's dangerous. They do not they do not approach a cassowary gently back away, keeping the bird in sight. Do not run. <laughs> and we were trying to find one. Um, yeah, they're they're very dangerous. They can beat your car up. They've killed people. I think last year there was someone raising them in Florida, and he got killed by his cassowary. So it's not a joke. Yeah. Anyway, we were searching for one. We really wanted to see one. And like they're ostrich size. And we visited four or five sites looking for them. No luck. And well, this was at one of the reserves. It was this, uh, we found their plaster replica eggs of the of, uh, of cassowaries. And they're, like, they're big, like they're six or seven inches long. So they had big eggs and that's what they're, they just stick them in the, the lay them on the ground like that. But no real birds. We didn't see any birds. And so we were kind of like, that was that one of the biggest disappointments of the trip, the curse of the cassowary. So, and there's what an adult cassowary looks like and with, with a big front toe that uh, apparently can kick the stuff in there. Yeah. So I got this, this is a picture off, off, off the internet because I uh, wanted to uh, show you what they look like. So and we did, and during the, all these trips, we went in looking and the jungle is fabulous. Like these fan palms are huge. Like those fans are like six feet broad. And, and these fruits that they produce are one of the things that the cassowaries love. And the jungle is just fat. It was wonderful. It's just, they have this wonderful, uh, and they have these great boardwalks, like it's just fabulous. Yeah, the boardwalks were great. Of course, I guess it's a national park. It's also a, a internet, whatever, UNESCO. World Wildlife World, site. Yeah. World Heritage so, site. Yeah, and this is uh, oh, the mangroves. And uh, it's the only place in the world where mangroves are actual trees. Everywhere else, there's a shrub height. But in the tree, I guess it's such a rainforest, they can grow full size. Okay, and this is uh, called a cannonball mangrove, and that's like a grapefruit-sized fruit. And uh, when it gets to the right ripeness, it explodes and sends the, the seeds flying. So it's called a cannonball mangrove. And this is just another fruit of, of um, palm tree. a palm tree that is good for all the wildlife. There's many things, those small mammals and marsupials that feed on them, and also the cassowary. And we did take another crocodile tour, but this was a commercial one with, uh, you know, 30 or 40 people. And that's on the Dane tree again. Yeah, this back, is on the Dane tree. Back at Dane tree. Yeah. And we took it mainly, we weren't looking for crocodiles, but we were mainly looking for other birds, for birds and things, but we did see another crocodile. Makes you just not want to go in the water. And Connie was just about, we just about lost her at the tour, so. She, uh, anyway, this is about as close to the crocodile as I ever want to get. And uh, so our last park, I, uh, after Daintree, we went back to Cairns, but I left out one park, Lamington National Park, which is 
just on the Queensland, uh, Queensland, New South Wales border. And this is, this is my favorite park. And it, it, again, it was in this sort of tropical jungle. I think that is the Australian flame tree. And so, so it's on the, yeah. It's in the, in the forest. So I think it's a native one. Okay, anyway, it's on Lamington Plateau and the McPherson Range of Mountains. Anyway, a wonderful area, relatively high elevation. It's on the Queensland, New South Wales border. Uh, so it's about 85 miles from the coast. And it's about 100 kilometers from Brisbane. And we stayed at O'Reilly's Lodge, which was just the best. We loved it. And the star shows where, where we would be on the map of, of Queensland. So we were kind of halfway through our trip at this time. It was deluxe because we had been camping, right? It was supposed to rain, so we didn't want to camp. So we so, stayed in our fancy. It was pretty deluxe for us. And yeah. with this beautiful Aboriginal designed uh, pillows and stuff, it was quite nice. Tiny little parking <laughs> And uh, the trees, like uh, it's untouched, it hasn't been any logging, and the trees are like towering giants. It's one of the best, best uh, forests in the world. And uh, wonderful flowers and uh, bottle brush flowers right around the lodge, which the birds love. And lots of fungi because it's wet. And um, this, this bird here is called the yellow-throated scrub wren. And I, I took some really crappy pictures and none of them are any good. So I got a couple off the internet because this is one of, uh, maybe my favorite bird. These guys are like tiny, like they're like little mice, like, and they fly around your feet and they're just like, they're kind of like chickadees, except they're around your feet. They're, right around the, the floor of the forest. Anyway, they're just wonderful. I just, uh, and they seem to be really friendly. Anyway, it's kind of wonderful, magical little species. And again, we, we took a hike through the forest and luckily it was a dry day. One, one the next day was raining and I, I was watching these guys come from the hike and they're scraping leeches off their legs because uh, as soon as it gets wet, the leeches jump from the leaves onto your legs and onto your body. So we didn't get any leeches when it was dry. And uh, so what do you think this is? Uh, maybe an Aboriginal burial mound? Nope. It's a nest. And it's a nest of the, uh, this, uh, what's this thing called? The, the uh, scrub? The Australian brush turkey. They're yeah. very common. They're all over the place. Yeah, and they're pretty friendly, although maybe they're not so friendly when they're not around the, the park, but uh, because the, uh, because people used to eat them, but they're kind of a goofy little turkey guy, but uh, they, they lay their eggs in the mound and then they leave them and they kind of adjust the temperature of the mound by moving vegetation around. So and, you go through the forest and they're like scratch, scratch, scratching. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they're uh, quite a little cool and that's sort of like the scrub fall except different uh lots of waterfalls rainy place oh and this is this is uh well i mentioned the book book this is the book book it's a uh southern book book or boo book or or, or more book <laughs> as smallest all in australia it's about 10 and a half to 14 inches and there's eight subspecies. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna give you a little uh, play the, the, the sound. Oh, maybe I'm gonna play the sound. Is that, that's why it gets its name. Oh no. <laughs> Anyway, that's the that's the more boo book, and it's uh, we heard it in a number of different places, so it's quite a, a relatively common owl. So 
Here's our last marsupial, I think. And this is the pat, pat a melon. This is the red-necked patamelon. Red, red-necked patamelon. So these are the other uh, group, sort of group of, uh, of, of kangaroo marsupials. So uh, these guys are small, like bunnies, and uh, they're basically they're uh, just a small wallaby. And they're just running around around the hotel. Yeah, it's these were right. Site. These were right around the uh, hotel, and the rabbit size. And the one of the their tail is shorter, thicker, and less hairy hairy than the wallabies. In fact, they kind of don't have hair on their tail, so that's one way you can tell. But these guys, we saw them in a number of places too. Um, but they're really cute. There's no doubt about it. And one of the things about the lodge is they have a, they have the naturalist that goes out every day and feeds the birds. So there's lots of birds showing up. And here, this is the lady that was doing it, a really uh, good birder. She's feeding uh, two uh, king parrots, right? fe female king parrots right there. They're green. The adult, uh, the male is red. And on the right there is two more, two bowerbirds, uh, regent male and female. The male is the uh, yellow one. And I think that's a crimson rosella. There. Yeah, that's a crimson rosella. Or, yeah. yeah. Or, uh, yeah. Part. yeah, these are the regent bowerbirds. Very like this is these birds are prized for people. Birders, birders love these guys. And this is the uh, male king parrot, and uh, which is red. So the female is green, the the uh, male is red. And there's another crimson rosella, again coming in for goodies. And uh, they were really tame. So you, if you you had to stay still, or they might poop on you. But these are uh, crimson rosellas. And again, there's the, there's the uh, bower birds, uh, regent bower birds, female quite drab because she's the one that's nesting. And we we. Um, during our hikes, we also had an observation tower. So Connie is just just coming up the tower with a very cool, very good views of the all the forest. Um, so it was very enjoyable. And uh, but we didn't see very many birds up there, ironically enough. But uh, there was some pretty big trees. This is a a living tree still with a, quite a huge uh, hole in the base. And this uh, little guy is a thrush, uh, bron no, it's chestnut-tailed thrush. Russet-tailed thrush. Russet-tailed thrush. It looks like a thrush. Yeah, it does look like a thrush. And Connie loves going across these bridges. I didn't mind so much, but uh, the jungle was great. Um, now this is a this is an eastern whip bird. Uh, and we got some pictures, which is great because there's hard to get pictures of. And it has a whip crack, so, whip crack song. And it's, it's interesting because the male does the whip and then the female does a little, sings the rest of the tune and I'm gonna try and play it. So when you get to the whip, then the part after the whip is the female. So let's, oh no, there we go again. This one back up a little bit. Oh, there we go. Okay. That's the female there. Yeah. So the whip is the male, and then the following little part is the female. So and it, uh, very, very uh, interesting interaction between the species. This is uh, this, just a view down the valley to the lowlands and where the town, the Corona, Cornaroma or whatever the town was. 
Where we... And these are little crimson browed. Red browed finches. Red brown finches. And unfortunately, it's one of the worst pictures I have. But they were just little friendly guys hanging around the, the uh, lodge. Just about done here. Oh, and the paradise rifle bird. We, we saw the female, we didn't see the male, but these are iconic birds for, for that jungle. This is a female and uh, they call the rifle bird because uh, the song sounds, sort of sounds like a rifle. Uh, I don't have a so song though, but the male is crazy. It has, it has this, uh, this, I didn't take this picture, this picture I just added to show you what the males are like. They have this crazy display. Uh, but we only saw the female, unfortunately. Okay, and uh, okay, so look at this, what a mess, eh? What is this? Garbage, could be, it is garbage, or treasure, or a love nest. Well, it's a love nest, actually, and this is a, this is a, a love nest. It's a bower for the satin bowerbird. So the male satin bowerbird picks all this stuff up and brings it and, uh, to its bower. And, uh, and uh, then the female comes and they do a little bit of nitty gritty stuff and they have little babies. So anyway, it's a- uh, This was right near the hotel too. Yeah, like- Right a, near their storage shed. Yeah. <laughs> and David Attenborough photographed this for one of his, uh, uh, nature programs this exact bower so it so obviously what's going on here yeah he's trying to attract his sweetie okay come on and another view of the valley and one last bird this is the uh, yellow breasted robin really nice little guy and very friendly and that's it, we're done. The sun sets on Australia. Yeah, and you guys, if anybody's awake out there, I'll, I'll be surprised. Okay, so, oh, stop share, I guess.